Hi Jessica, this is Tony. I'm doing your white balance and ISO critique. Uh, looks like you have a Nikon D3100. Uh, this is, uh, I like this shot. This is uh, kind of nice how you crop this. Um, so shot it at ISO 3200. So, uh, you know, pretty high ISO there, but uh, the colors and everything are looking really good. Okay, that looks good. Let's see your next shot here. I noticed that this one is kind of a companion piece to this one. And I imagine that you shot this one with um, maybe the open shade or the cloudy day white balance and that this one might have been just on uh, on normal. Hard to say, hard to, to uh, say. It doesn't really say what your uh, white balance was there. But your ISO being at 360, that's perfectly uh, just fine. 30th of a second is uh, is a little on the slow side, but if you have it on a tripod or something, it's not a problem. But your aperture at uh, f14 gives you quite a bit of depth of field. If you wanted to have a little bit faster shutter speed, you could have opened up your aperture just a little bit more and given yourself a little bit more speed. Okay, now here's something right here, a uh, perfect example of that. Uh, now, you're shooting plenty fast on this one, ISO 3200. Uh, but your exposure time, you know, your shutter speed, is a fifth of a second. So very hard to hand hold and also to be able to capture uh, any kind of action. So what's going on here is uh, you need to go in here and adjust your aperture so that the, uh, the aperture of your lens is open and that will give you a much faster shutter speed. We're going to, in the... Next week, we're going to spend a little bit of time going over that relationship between aperture and uh, shutter speed. But in this case right here, um, your aperture is set at, at 14, which is um, uh, you know, basically giving you lots of depth of field, but minimizing uh, your ability to shoot faster shutter speeds, especially when you have a dog, um, you, know, you want to be able to uh, capture that. So... ISO 3200 here, so another once again a fifth of a second, but uh, you know, and so fortunately he wasn't moving and you weren't moving, and so it's a little bit steadier of a shot. But definitely need to open that aperture up to like 2.8 or f4 or whatever you can open that up to. Um, once again, your aperture is at uh, f14, so okay. Um, not saying what your ISO is, maybe uh, I imagine it's still 3200. Uh, and I noticed that your white balance, you, you were doing some adjusting with your white balancing here. So that's good. But your aperture, you got to change that aperture. Look on that and, and make sure you're doing it. But I'm, I'm seeing that you're changing your uh, your white balancing here. So that's good to, to go run through those different, what those different variations will do for you. To see what it's going to do in terms of your color. Um, yeah, and this one right here, uh, you know, pay attention to what you're getting here. I mean, it, it kind of an interesting shot, but uh, but definitely pay attention. That aperture, you, you know, you're, you're pretty much stuck on these settings here. And I want you to make sure that you know what you're working with here. So uh, your ISO probably still at 3200. Your exposure at a fifth of a second. You, you might even have it on manual. It's hard to tell. Hard to tell what you got. Uh, okay, now now your ISO is at 100, um, and you're outside. Yeah, you might have your camera on manual because it, this looks a little. This looks pretty much overexposed. So I would definitely go in there and make sure you didn't have your camera on manual. Now, uh, once again, same settings: 100, fifth, a fifth of a second, f14, and once again. ISO 100, a fifth of a second, F14. You may be changing your white balancing, but everything gets thrown off here. Now, now on this one, <laughs> maybe you, you discovered that you had, uh, your camera might have been on manual, and now your camera's, uh, you're making different settings here. Um, the fact that it would set itself on 110 ISO leads me to believe that maybe you turned it on auto. So don't don't uh, don't turn your camera on auto. 
uh, make sure that you're you're making those uh, adjustments. And so, yeah, like in this exercise, I wanted to do a combination of ISO and white balance. White balance on here looks well, okay. Could be a little bit um, a little bit on the warmer side if you you know. Uh, Okay, exposure on this one looks good. Looks like you went in here and cropped it a little bit. Um, <coughs> this one looks looks good too. You know, in terms of the uh, white balance, hopefully you set it on uh, like a cloudy day. And hopefully you set your ISO. Now, when you're outside in shade like this, you know, something around uh, 200, 400, that's probably a good place to be. Um, this is kind of reminiscent of your older pictures where your um, ISO set at 100 and exposure at a fifth of a second and aperture at 14. So I tend to think that maybe you just had it on manual. Anyway, um, so some of the images worked out just fine in terms of uh, white balancing. It looked like you were able to do the white balancing and you, you were certainly able to shoot some um, higher ISO shots, um, but uh, by all means, make sure that you, uh, if you had your camera on manual, take it off manual, and definitely pay attention to the aperture, uh, because you had it closed down for a lot of your uh, pictures. Okay, thanks.